Hello everybody and welcome back to Robert's Reviews. Today we are going to be continuing the Harry Potter series. I'm very excited about it. We're almost done, kind of. We only have three more films to go before we are fully caught up on the channel. So if you guys are interested in that, make sure you guys are subscribing so you don't miss the next three. But today we're going to be talking about Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1 was released in 2010. It was written by Steve Close and directed by David Yates again. So this is David Yates' third film directing and the first one that I thought was actually at least reasonably good. This film came out when I was nine, which is ridiculous. I watched this one in the theaters and I remember it vividly. Um, I love this film. Uh, it's got a special place in my heart. It's not very good. In, like it's, it's good, but it's not like the best movie in the world, but it's got a special place in my heart because I, I grew up with these films. And this is one that I fell in love with immediately. Um, but upon rewatch again, I mean, I've watched it like 30,000 times, um, it's definitely not the best movie in the world. No spoilers, of course, because this one definitely could be spoiled. Um, but the idea is Harry and Hermione and Ron are going on the run, trying to find all these horcruxes so they can finally kill Voldemort. And this is one book, right? So the Death House Part 1 and Part 2 are in one book. And they decided to split this into two parts because everybody was doing it. They had Mockingjay Part 1 and 2. They had, um, what is it, Breaking Dawn Part 1 and 2? Or was it, I don't know, something. Twilight had a Part 1, Part 2, and so did Harry Potter. It was a big year and a couple, it was probably like three or four years of just Part 1 and Part 2, Part 1 and Part 2. Um, people were just like, oh, they can make money doing that? And they did. Um, this is one that I kind of think could have, should have been split into two parts. Although maybe a little bit more evenly. Because this one, while it is probably about the same length as the second one, and it is halfway in the book, by the way. I don't know if you've checked, but it is almost directly halfway in the book. Um, but the issue is that the first half of the book and the first half of this movie, not a whole lot happens. It's a lot of them walking. It's very Lord of the Rings-ish, which is fine. But, like, it's a lot of just walking around and kind of guessing. There's a lot of really great action moments that work really well, particularly with the score. I think the score for this film is top-notch. I don't remember a lot of the score for the second film, but I'll, I'll mention that in next week's video. But in this one, I think the score is literally perfect. The score just matches the film so well. There are times where there's action sequences where there is no score. And it's amazing. I, like, just genius. I think it works on a very, very good level. The score is wonderful here. I like. I think the acting is, is very good. I, pref I actually really enjoy the look of Harry here. And, and the look of all the other characters as well. Where they kind of look a little bit more grimy. A little more grizzly. Harry obviously has shaved it a bit. He kind of looks like this. Where he's got a little bit of stubble. Um, and the next one he looks even better because he's got even more stubble. And it looks like he's been on the run for a while. I think it was brave to put that, to, to do that, but very well done. I, I, I think that it should have been done that way, but brave anyway, because Harry Potter is a love character and making him look kind of grimy and making him look kind of, you know, unshaven and, and unkept is kind of a risk because it might look make him look un more unappealing for the audiences, which kind of sucks for money reasons, I guess, but I think it was a wonderful idea. It looks so real and so good and it's exactly how I imagined in the book, which is one thing I do want to comment upon is that I love how close to the book this one is. This one and the second one are so, so close to the book, it's almost unreal. And this is surprising to me because this is the same team that wrote that wrote and direct, directed this, the same films that came before this, right? The Order of the Phoenix and the Half of Prince were awful in my opinion, they were just so bad. But this one's so good, and the reason why is because of the tone, which I mentioned in the other two videos about these, about the Death of the Hour, sorry, about the um, Order of the Phoenix and the Half of Prince is the tone, right? Technically, those two movies are part of the war saga as well, but this one's where the war actually starts, and we're allowed to have this deep, dark tone throughout the entire film, right? And there's a couple lighting moments where, like, you're like, oh, they're happy again, they're, they're cracking jokes, it feels good, but then it goes back down to that deep tone. Whereas the other films, like, yeah, the war's going on, but it's not super in-your-face yet, so the tone shouldn't be as dark, and or as happy, depending on which film you're talking about. The, the tone has always been all over the place for David Yates here, but this is the first time where he got the tone smack dab in the middle. It was great. But uh, I'm going to try to keep this one short because you know, I don't want to spoil it for one and for two. It's, there's not a, lot, a whole lot happens, which is kind of the issue that I have with the film. Again, really great film. I like it a lot, but not a whole lot happens, and it does feel like if I were to see this in theaters now, it might be a little bit more of a waste of money because really you don't get a whole lot, and it ends on a cliffhanger that would just piss me off anyway. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and give Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1 an A-. minus. This is currently probably not on HBO Max anymore. I think they actually took them off by now. But if they are there, they're there. Uh, I think they're on Stars now. I don't, I don't know. They kind of bounce around. I have them on Blu-ray because I need to. Um, but if you want to check it out, make sure you guys do. Um, I am going to be continuing this series with part two of this, of course. 
and with the first two Fantastic Beast movies. So if you guys are interested in that, make sure you guys are subscribing. Once we get to 150, if we have not already, I'm going to dress up like Spider-Man and I'm going to go to Walmart. So if you want to see that, make sure you guys are subscribing, liking the video, sharing with your friends. Let me know what you thought about the film down in the comments below. I always forget to ask that. Let me know what you thought. Um, and as always, keep watching movies and television, stay educated, and I'll see you guys in the next video.